You don't have to say it. We're all thinking the same thing. How do captains maintain that Adonis-like physique? Well, I can tell you, you young kids out there, don't expect you can just do this overnight. This comes from years of abuse and also from eating a lot of good groceries. And today we're going to take you, well, the chief is going to take you with the AV to go grub shop. Everything loaded up, and that includes our big cooler. And our cooler right now is filled with all kinds of bags. But most of the places we go don't have bags, you know, like Costco. Anyway, here's the problem: the barge is light. We are currently uh, weather-bound in Wilmington. They charge you by the foot, yeah, thing, so let you go use it for the barge to be tied up, and we're outside the barge. So that means we have to get everything up the barge over across the barge and then back down the barge into a taxi. It can't just be any taxi. It's got to be a taxi that's port approved with proper paperwork and such as quick cards and that sort of thing. And uh, all for an additional cost, of course. But no price is too much when it comes to feeding the crew. Hello and welcome. I'm Tim and this is Tim B at Sea. And today we're taking you grub shopping. Many times we get into terminals, and uh, just getting out of the terminal is quite an operation. Here in Wilmington, North Carolina, they have a very extensive terminal, complete with all kinds of security and all kinds of stuff, and that's all part of going to the grocery store. So, what it takes to uh, keep a crew on a tugboat happy is a lot of good groceries. Since the dawn of time, Many people have, uh, well, many, from navies to uh, yachties to commercial fishermen and tugboaters alike, all know that one of the best things you can do for crew morale is to pay everyone, uh, to, excuse me, to pay for food for, keep morale up. Let's see, if the navy has the best food in the, uh, in the armed services. I don't know that for a fact, but that's what I've always heard. And, uh, in our case, we are allotted a budget. Um, the way it really works is that they put money on a uh, card, and we go out and uh, can maneuver within that budget to buy whatever we want. And uh, there have been years where that's been very tough to do, and uh, there have been other years where that's been easy to do. I can tell you right now we're headed for New York City. And things are usually much more expensive in New York than they are anywhere else. So doing our big grub shop in Wilmington, North Carolina is probably a better idea. So that's what we went with. Now it's not an, as easy as a thing that you might do at home. I know that uh, when I was living in Rhode Island, I was fortunate that my house was only about a mile away from the supermarket, so I'd go shopping, but I always forget one or two things, and uh, it was always not a big deal to jump in the truck and run over to the supermarket and grab what you needed. Unfortunately, that's something that we don't we, we don't have that luxury of doing on a tugboat. You know, uh, most of the time we go out, and uh, even if we're not at sea, we're very... It's, it, we're essentially locked on the boat for three weeks at a time. Um, you know, there are times that you have to get out to run to a pharmacy or, you know, go up and do paperwork with the office or whatever it is. But most of the places that we go, and especially the, the terminals that we go to, security won't let you in and out of these places when they deal with what we call red flag or hazardous materials, meaning oil or petroleum products. 
it's very difficult to, to get on or off the boat. And, uh, so, when we have the opportunity to go, and in this case we have to pay extra to do that, we go out and we make it worthwhile. We get everything we need for a three week spin. Now, while this is happening, I'm still on the tugboat, and uh, Luke's on the tugboat with me, and the AB and the engineer are out grub shopping, and I gave them a camera, and they clipped it onto the onto the basket, as you can see, the little cart here, so you can kind of see them running around doing their thing, but uh, it's usually a good idea. Not all boats work this way, but my philosophy is the guy that's cooking really should be the guy that's doing the, he should be in charge of the grub, grub shopping. After all, he can only cook what is on the boat. So, it kind of makes sense that he goes. But because of the quantity of stuff that we have and the limited time that we have to do it, we usually send somebody with him. And it's usually Luke or the engineer. Sometimes I get to go. But it doesn't happen all the time. So, uh, Anyway, we get everything from uh, sodas. You saw them loading up with, uh, we've been drinking a lot of uh, oh, carbonated water, they call it seltzer water. And you see, we've got cases and cases of water that we, bottled water as well that we buy. But unfortunately, the things that we really want aren't allowed. <laughs> We'd love to load the boat up with beer and wine, but, uh, um, the days of the rum ration are over, so nobody can drink or anything. Many, m many tugboatmen or mariners refer to your time at sea as sea talks. <laughs> so instead of sea talks, we go to sea for a while and uh, have to sustain. Sustain. But uh, anyway, everything has to be got gotten from uh, spices to oils to everything. It's usually, uh, I'm not in charge of this, sure. Oh, these guys won't shut up on the radio. Let me see if I can stop this. Okay, I hope that's better. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, we, we have to get everything. And uh, I, I'm not in charge of this grub shop. Um, I haven't been in charge of the grub shops since I was uh, on deck. and uh, But it's usually usually the plan is that you get because it, we're going to spend a couple hours doing this we usually try to get the dry goods first and the stuff that's non-perishable and then do that later I think that uh, in this particular thing you'll see that we are at a regular supermarket right here and we'll be doing this and then after this I think they run over to Costco and uh, be doing a big shop over there as well now they're getting some Veg, fruit and veg. When I was on deck, the viewers of the channel will know that uh, I'm what they call a hoss piper. I started at the bottom and came up through the top. And uh, <laughs> I uh, always enjoyed cooking, but uh, one of the things that <laughs> many mariner has said is that a good cook can make up for a lot of bad uh, you know like if you can't throw a line very well or you're not great on deck if you're a good cook you usually are kept around on the crew <laughs> I don't know if that's uh, true or not but uh, I certainly enjoy cooking. I can also tell you too that during my career I've had many a young mariner who says they don't know how to cook uh, try to get out of cooking and uh, I tell them well we'll give you one hitch where somebody else will cook but after that that's part of your job I can't say that oh I don't round up on the barge or I don't do docking and sailing you know <laughs> we have to do everything so uh, deckhands have to cook they don't cook all the meals they just cook the main meal but uh working a six and six watch schedule most of us will fend for ourselves for breakfast and lunch and then we all 
if we can, sit down together for dinner. Or if we can't, the person who's on watch will be uh, running the boat while the rest of us eat, and then uh, the meat will relieve the captain, or vice versa. But I've seen many uh, young mariners come on that couldn't cook at all, and uh, really kind of forced them to cook. Told them, look, you got a We'll cover you this hitch, next hitch, go home, talk to your mother, talk to your girlfriends, watch a few videos, read a book. And uh, it's not uncommon for the worst the worst guy to start, who starts cooking for you to turn out years later to be one of the greatest cooks, I mean, almost restaurant grade. And uh, it really has something. Um, I, I can tell you from personal experience that... Uh, that when you're cooking for other people like this and you're not paying for what you're cooking, it gives you the ability to experiment to do things that you normally wouldn't do. And I should also say that um, it should be no surprise, judging by the size of all of us, that uh, we're a very forgiv forgiving lot. Um, we might tell you that your food's terrible, but we end up eating it all anyway. <laughs> so that's kind of how that works. But uh, we, we do find that uh, our system works pretty well. Our fruits and vegetables last an easy two weeks, and usually two and a half weeks. And in this case, we are shopping uh, not quite a week in, but uh, four or five days into the hitch. So we should be good to go for a while. It's very common in the galley of most tugboats that you'll find a grub list and it's kind of a wish list so that when we go grub shopping if there's some specialty items that one person likes um, they can write them in there and guys will try to pick that stuff up for them looks like we're over at Costco now and you can see we're loading up on the meat other guy there is our tankerman he, uh, he came with uh, with these guys because, like I said, we had to pay extra to get a uh, taxi that was uh, port approved. So we put the tankerman and uh, two guys from the tug to go out. Remember, the, the tankermen are usually two guys that live on the on the barge, and uh, they have their own quarters and own galley and all that sort of stuff. So they don't eat with us. What that, that's really what I'm trying to get at. Grub shopping is something that uh, some people don't like doing, and some people really look forward to doing. It seems like people that uh, are newer in their career are eager to get off the boat and see some new faces and that sort of thing. And uh, Lord knows that was me for many years. But uh, now today, maybe I don't know if it's my age or I've just been doing it for a while. I really don't mind being on the boat. Working with a uh, grub shopping. Oh, so great to be able to have somebody else do it for me. <laughs> there's also there, there's also a thing where you have to worry. Like I say, there have been times the grub budget has changed over the years as inflation changes. And different, you know, different places you get you know, some places are more expensive than others and that sort of thing. So not only do you have to ensure that you have enough food for enough people for enough time, but you also have to do it within the budget that you have. And sometimes that's harder than others. We're very fortunate that we work for a good company and very proud to say that our company not only gave us a raise this year, but they also increased our grub money so uh, that's kind of good too. So uh, we got a little bit more money to play with. And uh, thanks for a better time. Let's see, we're going through a few different carts here. Incidentally, if you're still watching by this point, you might want to try to figure out 
see how much here we are loading up with water right now. Um, you, you, you might want to see when, when we load, we probe back onto the boat. It'll be interesting to see in your comments if you can guess how much uh, our bill was all together with everything combined when you see it come aboard the boat. <laughs> but you can see our AB is a uh, has a list and he's going around getting everything off the list. In this case now it's up to the paper products. Remember we need everything on the boat. And, uh, from laundry detergent to shampoo to not just the fruits and vegetables and meats. Oh, getting back to cooking. When, uh, when a new guy is breaking in or there's a new guy to the crew I don't believe that I'm the only one. I think this is a kind of an industry-wide thing, but uh, if you're on another type boat and you haven't received these orders, let me know. But generally, the rule of thumb is is that uh, we want three things. We want a protein, a vegetable, and a starch. And any combination of those that you want to do is good with us, and uh, or hopefully you'll do a good job with that. But... Uh, yeah. We don't want to just sit yeah. down and just have a uh, steak and nothing else. <laughs> you know? Or have a nice fish and no rice, and no vegetables. You know? There are some uh, boats that like a salad all the time. They worked on some boats that uh, the salad was something that was a huge thing that everybody ate all the time. I, I think that I'm one of the only guys that eats salad on the boat. And luckily, the AB uh, always has a bowl of salad in the refrigerator for me so that when we're eating dinner, I can go and get a little bowl of salad as well. But that usually lasts for a while because, like I say, not everybody in our crew, this particular crew, is as salad friendly as I am. <laughs> so here we are. Since the guys have left, they brought these two train cars in. Well, they brought a whole bunch of train cars in. But they're blocking us from here to the barge. And so that, uh, that gave us a, uh, a little problem we had to deal with. So I got with the tankerman that was still on. Remember, there's two tankermen. So I got with the other tankerman and said, Hey, can we get a basket and... Uh, put all this stuff on the basket and we were going to do that anyway but he wasn't sure if he could reach out all the way over across these two different train cars and so uh, we hooked it up and we're very very happy when we did it this is going to involve a couple different moves so what they're going to have to do is lift up the basket we say a basket this one's actually like a plastic box plastic tote or whatever. You hear it comes now. But uh, anyway, um, we lift it to get it all the way over those train cars. They lift it over here, and then we'll, they'll load this thing up, and then they'll bring it over to the other side of the barge, disconnect it, and then pick it up with the other crane on the other side of the barge to lift it up and over and drop it onto the tugboat. And you might think that that's very inefficient. You know, I always get the funniest comments from people saying, oh, you really ought to do this, or you really ought to do that. Well, first of all, I don't design this stuff, and uh, second of all, one thing that a lot of people seem to forget in the comments is that uh, as fun, as great as a job as this is, it's a job, and uh, I'm employed by a corporation, and the corporation is in business to make money, and so they put the equipment on to maximize their profit, and in that case, uh, Instead of having one giant crane that would do all of this stuff, it's better to have two, especially because grub shopping and using a crane is something that we do, we don't do all the time. Where when we're bunkering or loading or discharging, they're doing that all the time. And in that case, you want a, a crane that's right on the side of the barge. So that, oh, that way they can see everything that's going on. Now they're transferring it over to the other crane. Now this is the view from the view from us down on deck. And we've actually had two of these lifts. Just one lift and then another lift. Now back on the boat. Here we are. 
give you an idea. I just kind of ran the camera around showing all the different stuff that we got. Here's the here. This is our uh, pirate booty. <laughs> A whole cooler full of uh, meat. But uh, all the crew chips in. You can see all the water and seltzers and all that sort of stuff. I need some Bojangles chicken. I'm not. Cook. AB being our cook was uh, out working all day, so uh, give him the night off by bringing in some chicken for the boys. But everybody pitches in to get the stuff uh, as cool as quickly as possible. We've got two big freezers, two big chest freezers outside, plus the commercial fridge freezer right here. One of the things that we do before we go grub shopping is to clean out all the stuff that's expired and stuff that's, you know, the nasty vegetables and that sort of stuff. And rotate the old milk out to the front and put the new milk in the back and that sort of stuff. Look at those beautiful steaks. I'm a big Costco fan. There's uh, many things to like about Costco. Their meat is one of them. They have, they have wonderful meat there. <laughs> on the tugboat, on our tugboat anyway, uh, and most of the ones I've worked on, Saturday night is traditionally steak night, and Sunday night is traditionally win wings. As I'm recording this, it's uh, Super Bowl Sunday right now. So, uh, wings for the Super Bowl. And... Uh, but we have wings even out yeah, of season because we, that we out, like we them so that. You want the and, uh, hamburger broken. All right, yeah, AB yeah, has yeah, done a yeah, phenomenal yeah. job. Oh my God, there's he a used to uh, fry them, and yeah, now yeah, he, put, put right the he's got them down where he's baking them, and they're really yeah, good. Yeah, this one too. Hopefully yeah. a little bit so just put better right for right uh, um, sink is what I meant. our bodies and our yeah, arteries. No, I said fridge, but I meant sink. Damn it, I wish you'd do what I thought. But, uh... Yeah, the um, the hamburger has to be split. I think they're six pound bags that we get, so we split those into two, three pound bags. <laughs> and they give us uh, whole chickens that come in two, and we split those in half. Oh, that's so that, uh, that when we freeze everything, good, um, we can pull out meals at a time. Uh, yeah, but anyway, that's about it. Thank you so much for coming along and watching, and uh, you guys. Uh, really pre I appreciate it. If you like this video, maybe you can think about hitting the like, subscribe, comment, and uh, maybe you can buy the boys a beer if you want by hitting the special thanks button and or going and uh, joining the Patreon. Special shout out to my Patreon. And put a link in the description below. You guys take care, be safe, and I'll see you on the one.